All right, I got a lot of requests from you guys to do a Michael Jordan uh, workout breakdown, looking at the exercise that he was doing, giving my thoughts on how he was training. So let's get to it. Flat pull down, the legendary Tim Grover in the back. Well, there was a you got the weightlifting belt. Paper saying how Michael was tired of taking a physical abuse from the Detroit Pistons and wanted to start a strength and conditioning program but he was afraid to uh, lift any weights because he didn't know what the effects were going to be on his game. And I actually contacted the team physician and the athletic trainer at that time, met with both of them to explain my philosophies, and uh, they introduced me to Michael. And Michael said, you know, we'll try it out for 30 days, and 30 days turned into 15 years. All right, so right off the bat, he gives you the goal. This is why we're doing weights. We are not doing it for athleticism, and this isn't rehab, tendon health. Maybe there was aspects of this involved, but the goal is I got to be able to handle the, the physical game against the Pistons. They got the Pistons rules. I'm driving. I'm floating. I got my 46, 47, 48-inch vert. I'm getting hit, and I'm falling to the ground every time. I just need a little weight I need uh, to be a little bit more physical. All right, so that's the most important thing is establishing the goal because you can't look at somebody's training and then assume that like, oh, it's good or bad. Oh, that's bad for athleticism, so it's bad for him. Well, he's saying, I got the athleticism. I don't need that. Let me try to get bigger without losing the athleticism. Let me try to get bigger and stronger without losing my shooting touch, right? So off the bat, that's the goal. I said uh, in the training was extremely unique. I mean, the most competitive individual. Dumbbell bench. Met, uh, still use it today. It Very day. common in NBA oh, weight rooms today. Somebody else was going to outwork them, so he wanted to outwork them. Uh, knew what his weaknesses were, knew what his strengths were. Uh, he had a big thing where he used to say, hey, listen, I'm going to turn my weaknesses into strengths. Yep. And he did. And what you notice is every year there was uh, evolution in his game. There was something that this he is added, true. whether it was a new shot, a new move. He was never satisfied, uh, no matter how many championships, how many titles, what people said, how many accolades he got, he always wanted to get better. And most practices have the starting five on the same team. Uh, practices where Michael's at, they always had Scotty on the other team because Michael wanted to go against the best defender and the best player or the second best player on the team. He never yeah, he, mentally on a whole nother level. So easy bar curl. I mean, you can walk into a couple NBA weight rooms and still see people doing that. Um, it's, it's just, it's not a priority for me, but if size is the goal and hey, basketball players, hey, sleeveless year round, we want to look good. I'm okay with that. Is that going to help his game? Maybe not. If you do too much of it, could it hurt your game? possibly. Uh, but I think a little bit of some arm isolations, um, for the most part, it's not going to hurt anybody and it might make you look a little bit more physical. Who knows? Maybe it gives you a little mental edge because you look good, you play good. Again, if the goal is not athleticism and the goal is just being more physical, this type of work uh, still makes some sense. Like sometimes players get into like functional training and I love it. Like let's use lifts that actually help us move better. Great. Uh, but there are times where you just need to be more physical on the court. Like you have to have 10 extra pounds of muscle. Do you want to put that on quick? No, but over time, right? If you put on five pounds of muscle per year over time, 10, 15 pounds might not hurt you too much. And it might help you be more physical. Basketball is very, very physical, especially when you're undersized. This is something that I started realizing when I started playing against all of our NBA players. If you go up against a guy 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and athletic, and you're under six foot like me, they will see the rim at all times. It does not matter how good, how quick, how well you get in front of them. They will see the rim, and at that level, they make shots so well that they just elevate above you and they make shots. Now, one advantage that I have on most of these NBA players is I'm stronger. I can get low to the ground. I got a pretty strong upper body, pretty strong core, and then really strong lower body. And I can get under them and push them away so they can't get positioning. So you're not going to get those easy little 15-foot turnarounds on me. You're going to get pushed out. Now, if you make fadeaway threes, then you win, right? Same thing with if you're guarding KD. doesn't matter what you do. If he's hitting his fadeaway threes, you win. But if you go watch like Fred Van Vliet, Chris Paul, like the reason these guys are not defensive liabilities at six foot 
is because of their strength. They have the quickness, they have the defensive IQ, all that stuff, but the strength is what allows them to push bigger guys out so that they don't get positioning on them. But he practiced extremely hard, which made the game. Yeah, so that was a popular uh, method back in the day. There are some studies showing that uh, it increases risk of shoulder impingement on behind the neck pull downs and behind the neck presses, but that's not really true. I, I think it's mostly relative to range of motion. So like if you don't have that range of motion and then you go load that range of motion, yeah, there could be some shoulder impingements. Um, but Jordan obviously has this range and so he could train in that range. All the different aspects and understanding film and the other players and what their tendencies are and being so well prepared, he always had the edge over his competition. What the young athletes can learn from Michael and his mindset is there's more to preparing that pull for downs. a basketball game than just the dribbling, shooting part of it. Yep, there's knowing for sure. what the weakness and strengths of your comp uh, opponent is, what uh, the opposing team is, what your players are capable of doing, what they're not capable of doing, what you can do to enhance their abilities. It's a job. Okay? It's a job just like every other one, and the more you're prepared for it, the better you will be at it. But preparation takes hard work and it takes sacrifice that you have to do. Bench. Um, you know, if you're trying to pack on size, bench is an effective option. I don't love it. Um, kind of depends on the player. Uh, but if the goal is size and physicality, uh, a bench press does make sense. Um, I think you could get... Um, all you need through a, a flat dumbbell press and maybe even an incline press. I would start with just push-ups and then add a weight of vest to the push-ups and then go to dumbbells. And then if you happen to pass, you know, if you only have like 70 pounders in your gym and you pass that, then the next step would probably be um, the barbell. So not good, not bad. It just depends on what your goal is, as always. Um, one thing I didn't see is any lower body training never seen any lower body footage from MJ and I wonder if they kind of went with the the idea of like okay let me get my upper body stronger and then I'm not going to do lower body I'm going to get all my leg work through the court it's very possible um or maybe they just uh have never put out any videos of him doing lower body I know he did have some really bad patellar tendinopathy hit almost his entire career um, and that could play a role as well because at that time, I don't think they understood that load is good for the tendons. So if you have patella tendinopathy, we now know that it's really good to frequently load the tendons at that time. They probably thought that if the tendon was hurting, then if we load it, it's going to snap. So I wonder if that plays a role in it. Um, really don't know if you, if you've ever seen Michael Jordan train lower body, let me know if you have a video link. I would love to see that. Good stuff. Um, the legendary Tim Grover. Um, they they obviously did what they set out to do. He got more physical. He didn't lose athleticism. Now, when you age, you're going to lose some athleticism. So he's not going to jump uh, as high in his final championship as he did in his first championship. Or especially if you look at his college highlights, he might have had the most bounce in college in like rookie and second year, like his dunk contest years. That his bounce was insane, but I think that he put on muscle, he got more physical, and he didn't drastically reduce athleticism, which for him that was the goal. Um, and I would say that it worked out really well for him because he is the goat. And if LeBron wins a couple more, we could have a discussion, but right now, Michael Jordan is my goat. Um, so yeah, all right, guys, hit this video with a thumbs up hit me with a comment. Let me know what you want me to react to next. I'm mostly reacting to like NBA player workouts and that type of stuff. Um, I'm not reacting to trainers. I'm not reacting to trainers' opinions because there's so much nonsense out there that if I start attacking the nonsense, then my entire job will be criticizing people. And that's not what we do. We build, we show the results of what we're doing and that's what we do. We got nothing negative to say. We let the critics be the critics. Uh, we bring the positive energy. So let me know what NBA workout videos you want me to react to next. Until next time, I'm out.